Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Centauri Dreams, which is being made by forum user Hiko Riyami. And oh boy, does this mod make some serious changes, as what it looks to do to the game is completely replace our stock Kerbal Space Program solar system and change it into the Alpha Centauri solar system. Which, I'll admit, at first I was kind of iffy on whether or not I'd like this, but I really quite do, as if we actually load into the game. I've always been fascinated by the Alpha Centauri system, as of course it's one of the closest solar systems to our own, and it's got three freaking suns. Who wouldn't love that? I mean, well, unless you're not a fan of the sun. But yes, if we go into the tracking station here, we can take a look at what all we have, and now... Our home world, rather than being Kerbin, is Elcano, which, if we bring up the information on here, is not what its actual scientific designation is. Uh, the mod maker, and I completely understand their reasoning here, kinda didn't like, for their own sanity's sake, the whole naming convention for Alpha Centauri. Like, Elcano here is actually, according to our current scientific designation, Alpha Centauri. A B, and that's not exactly a fun name now, is it? So uh, the mod maker went through all the planets and moons, etc., that we think are over there in Alpha Centauri, and gave them actual names by different popular explorers, scientists, physicists, etc., so that it's a bit more palatable, which I'm pretty happy about. Cause yes, though I love you astronomers dearly, you guys. You guys aren't always good at coming up with names. I mean, come on, Alpha Centauri, A, B. But yes, this is our new home world. And as you can see here, we're kind of technically on the dark side of the planet when we start up a new game. But not really, because remember, this is Alpha Centauri. We don't just have that one sun there. We have another sun over... Oh god, let's zoom out really, really far. We have another sun over there in Alpha Centauri B. We're orbiting around Alpha Centauri A, but we still do get light from Alpha Centauri B over here. And then, of course, way, way, way in the distance is... Oh god, I gotta turn more over that way. Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star. So we've got all three suns of this little solar system here. So really, honestly, no matter what side of a planet you're on, you're probably not going to be having a completely dark night. In fact, I had a rocket on the launch pad earlier, and its solar panels were still getting some power from, I'm probably guessing, over from Alpha Centauri B over here, which is pretty cool. I do like that. But let's actually go through what all we do have here. So let's zoom back into Elcano. And it is quite a beautiful little world. I do really like the look of it. It's got uh, very nice browns to it and with the intermittent sort of oceans and lakes scattered about to give it a little bit more pop, a little bit more color, which is always quite welcome. And in fact, it's kind of hard to see here, but our new Kerbal Space Center is on uh, what looks like a small inlet between the two large seas, which is quite good. It's quite a nice little area. Now, the next body we have is, of course, our little moon over here, which has been named Hawking, and it's quite a small little thing. Would be quite interesting to try and land on, because, well, gravity, etc. It doesn't have much, and it's basically just a giant freaking asteroid that has been caught in our, uh, gravity, which is always good. Now, I should actually mention right off the bat here, ahem, this is actually a lot bigger than it probably would be in the normal Kerbal Space Program, because everything in Centauri Dreams is real to scale, or at least as best possible of information that we currently have on the Alpha Centauri system. All this stuff is proportional in size to what it should be in the real world. So it's basically an Alpha Centauri version of the real solar system mod that we have for our own star system in the game. So uh, yeah, these planets are much bigger than usual, and of course, so then are uh, little tiny asteroid moons like this one. So let us move on over to our next body, which is Newton, which is of course also orbiting around... 
Oh god, I've already forgotten. Oh god, I should really remember these things. Alpha Centauri A, there we go. I can never remember if we're around A or B, but yes, we have Newton, which is a lovely gas giant with some great rings here, and does have a couple of moons, one of which is probably my favorite planet, or technically moon, in this entire thing. And as you can see here, this, uh, oh, actually I could have just read that and it would have told me, oh yeah, we're around Alpha Centauri A. I should read things more often, but yes, our next planet, or technically moon here, is Inertia, which is quite a lovely potmarked moon, has some nice ice caps there, always good, would be a fun one to land on. The next moon is my favorite. This is Magnitude, and it is gorgeous. Very gorgeous. I just I just love the colors between the things. Uh, it is a pretty simplistic planet, really, but it's great to have all of the giant oceans and just the nice land masses with a good contrast in color between them. We, of course, have the large ice caps up there, which could always be fun to land on. But yes, just a... Just a simple planet, but I like I like the giant oceans. The next one we have is Acceleration, which is another tiny, tiny little moon, but quite a unique one. I do love the shape to it and all the little crevasses, etc. that this thing has. It's quite nice, quite nice indeed. Now the next thing we have is, of course, Alpha Centauri B, our other sun, which does have a few planets around it, the first of which is Kelvin, which if we zoom right on in here, there we go, this is supposed to be Alpha Centauri B C, and it's, uh, it's quite nice, nice and potmarked, no ice caps to be seen, probably because it's, you know, quite close to that giant freaking ball of sun, and, well, that was a really weird way to call a sun, oh, well, let's continue moving on, quite a nice planet, very hot, and uh, would be another fun one to land on a nice terrestrial planet. The next we have is Sagon, which uh, kind of just reminds me of Mars, but, you know, more orangey rather than red. But still a very, very cool, very nice, nicely made planet. And then we have Copernicus, which is an interesting one. If we zoom way the hell out, Copernicus is actually not technically orbiting one of the suns. This is where Copernicus is right there. There is Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, so we're orbiting around the two suns that are orbiting one another. So it's it's quite quite interesting. We're very similar to uh, Proxima Centauri, the other sun. We're just in a giant orbit around everything else in the middle. So it'll be quite interesting to actually try and reach this place, as it's, uh, oh boy, you'd have to get through a lot of different interesting gravities with uh, the two binary suns in the middle. But yes, another large gas giant. Very, very cool looking. And of course, does have a little moon of motion. Again, a pretty simple terrestrial planet, but certainly, certainly nicely colored. I do enjoy it. And then of course, finally, we have Proxima Centauri, the giant giant red well it's supposed to be a red dwarf it really doesn't look like much of a red dwarf but nonetheless this is actually i probably should have pointed out earlier on a pre-release alpha of this particular mod so it still has a long way to go so this will probably look much better in the future and more red dwarf-esque hopefully that would be nice and then we have an interesting body which i believe is next if i hit tab yes we have um we have the center because of course the only way that they could get the physics in the game to function with having the two binary suns orbiting here and then everything else orbiting around them was to create a giant central thing which is being called the uh, alpha centauri berry center and uh yeah it's just a, a giant Almost like a black hole. It's a it's a giant blob of nothingness in the center of space. Probably wouldn't want to uh, try and fly through that. That would probably be a very bad thing and then very poorly for you. But yes, if we tab once more, it gets us back to Alpha Centauri A. And, well, our little tour of the solar system there is done. So let's take a look at them in person. If we just leave the tracking station and head over to the launch pad... Uh, oh, yes, I already have a ship there. I completely forgot I left it on the launch pad. There we are. We have a lovely little probe. And as you can see here, even though we are technically on the dark side of the planet because we're facing... We're on the opposite side from Alpha Centauri A. We are still getting a decent amount of sunlight from Alpha Centauri B, though unfortunately 
in the stock game. I can't see it. If you do have, uh, oh god, what's the mod called? Hold on a moment while I try and remember. Distic uh, Distant Object Enhancer. If you do have that mod installed, you should be able to see the other sun over on the other side of the system a lot better. But yes, uh, with not having that installed, it should be, I believe, like right over there-ish. But unfortunately... We can't see it, uh, but our solar panels are still picking it up, which, uh, as you can see here, we're getting a tiny, tiny amount of sun exposure, which is enough to keep things going and give us a little bit of light here on our uh, launch pad, which if we do zoom out to show you the location of the Kerbal Space Center now, uh, there we go. We kind of got like a little lake behind us and then this large interior sea there. Very, very nice indeed. And, of course, let's actually launch this thing and go check out just a couple of the planets. We won't look at all of them, of course, but just to get a good close-up view of a few, let's go to Orbit Editor, and we will first, of course, orbit this planet. So let's go to there. I probably should have double-checked these orbits earlier before starting this, but we'll be good. We'll be good. So let's spacebar and apply. And, oh, nope, we, we screwed things up. Destination position was above the sphere of influence. Of course it was. Of course it was. Let's, uh... No, oh, we can't revert our flight here. Oh, because oh, it's still it's still t attempting to move. Well, I mean, technically, we don't need that engine that I put there. It's kind of just for show. So, let's go that. Ah, there we go. Now we're orbiting. Ah, beautiful. Look at that lovely atmospheric scattering. And if we close those and go to the map and zoom out a bit. Oh, boy, we are. <laughs> we are actually in for a collision with this planet. Our orbit is probably going to be dropping. Yep, it's going to be dropping in there. We are very close. But yes, a lovely, lovely looking planet. I do quite enjoy the look of this thing. It's uh, it's quite nice. But yes, this is Alcano once again. So let us change ourselves over to uh, which planet to go to now. Let's actually go to my favorite of them. Or maybe, well, let's head here first. And let's actually make this that apply. Beautiful, excellent, we did go to the correct one. Ah, that makes me happy, yes indeed. This is certainly my favorite of all of the planets that are in this one, or again, technically moon. I just, I like the coloration of it. I like the coloring. It's it's a very, very lovely looking planet. Uh, but yes, as you can see, our periapsis and apoapsis are moving quite a bit, intriguing. But yes, we have quite a nice little, uh, view here of our solar system with our one of the two suns that we have which is always quite nice to see and of course our large gas giant over here just all beautiful looking planets quite well made for this early pre-alpha of a stage in development for this mod again hopefully many many more changes will come in the future that will make these even better and more impressive uh, let's check out one more place perhaps let's go to Copernicus I think that would be a fun one, so let's go to Orbit Editor, and actually we'll go around its moon motion, yes, that would probably be safer, above the sphere of influence, okay, okay, let's try that, and, hmm, oh, it changed it back, didn't it, still above the sphere of influence, intriguing, intriguing, okay, let's try that, motion, Wow, holy crap. <laughs> Man, I really should have double-checked these uh, altitudes before starting this episode. But oh well, let's, uh, you know what, let's go back to you and just try for Copernicus. There we go, holy crap, we're close. <laughs> oh yeah, we're falling into that planet's atmosphere. Let's add another zero. There we go, that's a much better orbit. Lovely, lovely. Ah, uh, yes, quite a lovely large gas giant, all orangey, etc., from the multiple suns that we have in the distance, though it does seem to be closest to Proxima Centauri there. Overall, quite nice. I do really enjoy it. And if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description, as always. And it's uh, definitely one to give a try, even if only for a little bit, just to have a go and take a look at some of these planets in the Alpha Centauri system. It's just... 
it's interesting. That's that's why I think I wanted to look at it today. It may not be the most useful mod ever, but it intrigued me. So go take a look at yourself, have some fun with it, enjoy, and of course I do hope you have enjoyed this episode, and that you do come back for the next when we'll be looking at yet hopefully another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one my friends.